And we are recording. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Tuknak, and I'm the general manager of the Waukesha Water Utility. You are here tonight at the West Allison Greenfield construction update for the Great Water Alliance project. And we appreciate you attending here tonight. With me tonight, um, I have Katie Richardson. She is the program manager and she'll be talking about the route and communications. I also have Jeff Champion. He is the construction manager for Black and & Beach and he'll be giving a construction overview and I will be starting out the um, discussion tonight about the need for a reliable water supply for the city of Waukesha. Before we get started, there's a few housekeeping items that I'd like to go over with everyone. Um, we are having an online meeting. Um, hopefully we'll be out of these online meetings very shortly here, but it's due to safety during COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we do have a large audience and because of that, everyone is muted. However, you can submit questions at any time using the Q&A box if you would like to. Um, we will have a live question and answer session at the end. There have there were some questions that were submitted ahead of time and we wanna thank you for that. Um, they, we will try to answer those within the presentation. If they are not answered within the presentation, then we will answer them during the live question and answer period at the end. The meeting is being recorded. As you can see in the upper left-hand corner, it is being recorded. Um, we are we're going to post this meeting on the greatwateralliance.com website under your neighborhood for Greenfield and West Dallas. And therefore, if any neighbors or any residents in the community were not able to attend tonight or didn't get the notice, they will be able to watch this meeting and they will be able to always submit questions to us um, online at the greatwateralliance.com website. So with that, we'll get started. Um, again, I'm gonna talk about the need for a re reliable water supply for the city of Waukesha, basically giving a background as to why we are doing this project and why there is all this di disruption within all these communities. So Waukesha does have some water supply challenges. We currently depend on the deep sandstone aquifer and that is the aquifer. So on the right-hand side, you have a big chunk of land that basically is pulled out from southeastern Wisconsin. You have the Lake, Lake Michigan on your right, the city of Milwaukee, and the city of Waukesha as you go left. Um, again, further west, for left of the city of Waukesha would be Jefferson County. Um, and underneath the ground, where we get our water from is the confined sandstone aquifer, aquifer or the deep aquifer. And that's about 2,000 feet underground. And there's a thick layer of shale, which is a thick layer of stone underneath the ground uh, that's about 150 to 250 feet thick. That does not allow water to naturally percolate through the soil, groundwater to naturally percolate through the soil and recharge the deep aquifer. So many communities in southeastern Wisconsin were utilizing the deep aquifer and over the long term, that has created a drawdown and the groundwater is down more than 350 feet. Because we're down more than 350 feet, we have a lot of different contaminants that are increasing in concentration. Mainly level of radium is increasing and we are not in compliance with the radium standard. So therefore we need to develop a new water supply or we needed to treat the water. And um, there are a number of different reasons and we'll get into that in, the, in, in a minute, but we also needed to protect the wetlands, rivers and streams and the local environment. Um, in southeastern Wisconsin when we looked at our new water supply alternatives. So what did we do? We went to, um, we looked at, we did a study that started in 2002. I started at the utility in 2003. And we looked at more than 14 alternatives in depth. We created an environmental impact statement. And after looking at and reviewing all of those 14 alternatives, we came to the conclusion that Lake Michigan was the only reasonable alternative for the city of Waukesha. And that is because it would allow us to get into that recycle and reuse um, cycle, for lack of better words, uh, utilizing the water and sending it back and recycling it, being able to have a sustainable supply for the long term. So it was sustainable for the future. It was also very protective of the environment. Um, there would be no net loss of water to the Great Lakes because we're returning 100% of the water to the Great Lakes. 
We're also returning it to the root river, which needed the base flow in the root river for the fisheries and the environment uh, um, and the other habitat um, to get upstream and, and survive in this area. So they were looking for additional base flow in the root river, which is why it was decided that we would return it to the root river. And then ultimately this treatment was the best for the ratepayers of the city of Waukesha. So what did we do? There are a number of different phases that we went through. The first phase was we worked with the Wisconsin DNR to get approval. And how did we do that? We created an environmental impact statement. And in that environmental impact statement, we analyzed those 14 different alternatives in depth. After about five years of analysis with 27, I believe, uh, additional technical memoranda, that provided clarifications of the application in different points within the application. The DNR decided and they agreed with us that Lake Michigan was the only reasonable alternative. So then they notified the Great Lakes Compact Council, which is the council that governs the use of water in the Great Lakes. And that's made up of a representative of each of the Great Lakes states with input from the two Canadian provinces of Ontario and Quebec. And they notified that compact council that the state of Wisconsin believed that they had an approvable application for a diversion from Lake Michigan. Now, the compact council then took that application and over a six month period reviewed it. Several states and uh, provinces did their own technical reviews of our, of our environmental impact statement. They all submitted questions for us to respond to. There was a number of public hearings in, in different states um, and in the provinces. And ultimately in June of 2016, they voted unanimously to allow us and give us the approval to um, in, engage or implement a diversion from Great Lakes from Lake Michigan. So then we needed to negotiate a water supply deal with a water supplier. Ultimately, that led us to the city of Milwaukee, and the city of Milwaukee has agreed to sell us with uh, sell us water from the Great Lakes. Um, we will get that water from 76th in Oklahoma, and then we will bring that water to the city of Waukesha, where we will use it, and then again, and we will return it to the Root River um, for to return to the Great Lakes Basin. Then we had to look at different routes. Um, all of the routes and and all of the alternatives that we had to um, get Great Lakes water had us going through a number of different communities, including West Allis and Greenfield. Um, so we looked and we analyzed, we met with the different communities, met with the different uh, residents in the Ultimately, we finalized the route and we um, had a location, uh, developed the location for all of our infrastructure. And then we moved into phase five, which was how are we gonna fund this? So we ultimately decided to utilize clean water fund loans through the state that will fund this. And we also applied for and re received a water infrastructure finance and innovation act grant from the EPA. So a WIFIA grant. And it will save the ratepayers of the city of Waukesha um, a lot of money over the 40 years that we'll be paying for this. This is a $300 million project. We are looking to save money everywhere we can, obviously, because it is a great expense for, se the, for the 72,000 people of the city of Waukesha. Um, so this was one, help, one way the uh, federal government could help us. Finally, we moved into the construction phase, and where that is where we are right now. We are beginning the construction, or we are in, in the prime construction season for the first season of this project. And we are under construction, and we are going to talk about the route and communications during that construction. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Katie Richardson, who will talk about that. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Dan. So as Dan mentioned, I'm going to go over um, both the water supply route and the return flow route and how you can find information for both of those um, on our websites and how we'll be communicating throughout the course of the construction of this project. So there's two different pipelines that are being built as part of this project. Um, the return flow pipeline is 23 miles and it goes from the clean water plant in the city of Waukesha through the village of Waukesha, city of Muskego, and eventually getting to an outfall site 
at the Root River in the Sea of Franklin. There's also the water supply pipeline. And the water supply pipeline is a pipeline that will be actually being constructed in West Dallas and Greenfield. This is a 13 mile pipeline that goes from a booster pumping station in the city of Milwaukee through Greenfield, West Dallas, the city of New Berlin and the city of Waukesha to a booster pumping station located in the city of Waukesha and then connecting to the city of Waukesha's water distribution system. You might be asking yourself, why is a return flow line needed? Why can't we just have the one pipeline going through um, the Walker, Milwaukee and Waukesha counties? Uh, but as Dan mentioned, this project needed to be approved by the Great Lakes Compact Council. And as part of that conditions of the approval to borrow the water from Lake Michigan, it needed to be returned. So we are taking the same volume of water that is being used by the city of Waukesha residents and businesses, treating it at the wastewater treatment plant or the clean water plant in the city of Waukesha uh, to a high level it's tertiary treated effluent. And we're taking that and returning it back into the environment through the Root River, which eventually flows back to Lake Michigan. And this is beneficial as it creates a no, a no net impact on the lake levels in the Great Lakes and specifically Lake Michigan. And also the Root River where we're um, putting that treated effluent, putting the treated effluent into the, uh, okay, I'm getting a question that my volume's loud. I'm gonna try and speak a little bit louder. Uh, or my volume is quiet. I'm going to try and speak a little louder. Uh, so the Root River, the return flow line is needed to take the treated, highly treated effluent water from the city of Waukesha and return it to Lake Michigan through the Root River. And this actually benefits the Root River at the location we're returning the water to because it increases the base depth of that river and allows for fish to swim farther upstream to spawn. Okay. So as Dan mentioned, we are into the construction of this project for both pipelines. The pipeline construction began at the clean water plant um, in the city of Waukesha late last year. We also started construction on the water supply pipeline in the city of New Berlin. The work is going to continue to move through New Berlin and into West Dallas and Greenfield areas towards the end of this year. There is a stretch of construction that's being done at the edge of West Dallas and New Berlin right now. And there's about um, 800 more feet of pipeline that will be put in place. Um, the contractor is going to be moving between different areas for different types of open construction or trenchless construction that Jeff will explain a little bit later. But uh, they will be moving around. We will be trying to keep you informed of where the construction is through the website and through emails. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. We anticipate that the construction of the water supply pipeline is going to be completed in 2022 for um, all the pipeline in West Dallas and Greenfield. So the best source of information for finding out where the construction is and what the timelines are, um, and I'm speaking specifically to about West Dallas and Greenfield today. There is construction going to be in the city of Milwaukee and um, in New Berlin and Waukesha and Muskego and Franklin as well. And the best place to get that information about where this construction is happening is on the website, thegreatwateralliance.com. In your area, the route, um, you'll be able to see there's going to be icons that will have different information about where construction is, whether or not it's open, open cut or trenchless construction, so you can know what to look for. And then also information about timings and detours will be available with those pop-ups. Another place that you can look on the website is the In Your Area webpage. Here we're showing the West Dallas and the Greenfield sections. There's um, on those two pages, there'll be information about how to sign up for construction email updates. If you want to get sign up for those email updates, you'll get a email approximately every two weeks um, when the construction is moving and where it's moving to. And it'll have information about that timing that you can also find on the route. it will also have any latest construction updates that we do send out will be posted to the website there. Any detour maps that are relevant will be posted there. And also open house recording from this, record, from this open house or any future open houses will also be located on those web pages. We have a number of other different communication channels as well that kind of supplement the website. 
Um, we have a hotline where you can send in questions. You can leave a voicemail and someone will call you back within 24 hours. We also have email that is regularly monitored that we respond to. We have social media where we, um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channel where we put out educational information or updates about upcoming events or um, things like groundbreakings or open houses, those type of things are on our social media. On the website, you can also sign up for an e-newsletter, which we send out about quarterly. And that e-newsletter has information on updates to the program as well. Um, we also will on occasion use direct mail or open houses like we are tonight. For this open house, if you lived along the route, should have received a postcard in the mail. And we'll do that on occasion for, um, for events that we wanna make sure that we're getting your attention for. When we're out on site, we also have a, a, a few different channels for communication as well. We're gonna be using door hangers. And door hangers will be placed in your area approximately two weeks before construction starts. If the, um, if the contractor or the CM team needs to talk to you about maintaining access or if you have any special needs, we'll also put additional door hangers um, as we get closer to con the construction in your area. We'll also be using construction signage things like automated message boards and detour signs to show you where to go, where detours are going, if road closures are gonna be occurring. And then there's also gonna be inspectors on site from the Great Water Alliance team out there available to answer any questions you have. And they're gonna have the Great Water Alliance logo on their safety vest. And that's the, that's the team member that out there that you're gonna to wanna to talk to if you have an issue and you want to talk to somebody at the construction site, please look for the inspector with our vest. Um, logo on, you can also see it's up in the left-hand corner of these slides as well, and on the back of their vest. Um, but if you do do that, if you approach the construction site, safety is our number one priority. We wanna make sure that you are staying safe. We wanna make sure our, our workers are staying safe. We wanna make sure that the construction work can progress and get out of your neighborhood as quickly as possible. So please watch for barrels and signs. If you do approach the site, please look for the inspector with the Great Water Alliance logo so they can direct you to a safe space to talk and answer any of your questions. Um, if you're driving through these construction areas, please obey the flagging operations. Um, really wanna make sure that no one is getting hurt along the way for this, um, along this project. Um, a number of the questions that we got in ahead of time were about where, uh, where the construction or how the traffic management is gonna be explained or what's gonna be happening right in front of your house. And we'll, we'll get into those in the Q&A section. But at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff to just talk a little bit about the construction. Thank you, Dan and Katie. Uh, I'm gonna cover construction and what to expect, what to see as, as construction approaches through your, through your neighborhood. What? Uh, in general, the route will through uh, West Dallas and Greenfield travels from along Oklahoma Avenue from uh, 124th east toward into Milwaukee uh, and ends at 76th Street, where the booster pump station will be installed. Um, along West Dallas and Greenfield, um, 124th. Uh, from to national uh, Oklahoma area, the the pipeline, like like some of the questions that have been brought up, or what side of the, the road is the pipeline on? In this area, the pipeline is split on the boulevard on the north and the south sides um, uh, between 124th and National. We do we do shift to the south or at near that intersection. We do shift to the south side, so there will be traffic shifts. Uh, occasionally to accommodate those shifts. From West National, Oklahoma, to um, the I-41, the, we do alternate between the north and south side of the boulevards. And so again, just uh, when you're traveling through those areas, be aware of there may be some traffic shifts and uh, restrictions on either side of those boulevards. From I-41 to 76th Street, uh, we're primarily on the south side, but that does not mean that we're solely on the south side. So again, if you have specific questions about where 
what side of the road you're on or what impacts in your area there will be your specific area feel free to call the hotline and we will be more than happy to have answer any of those questions uh, just some general overviews of some of the areas where we will be working the national oklahoma 124th intersection there on the left uh, you see that that is a fairly busy intersection so uh, you will most likely expect some delays through there uh, but understand that we're doing the best we can to move as quickly as possible just to help eliminate those delays. The uh, center photo there, the Oklahoma looking towards the, the National and Oklahoma Avenue split. Uh, we do we do run through this. In, in this particular area, we're in the green space there on the right with some trenchless technology that I will cover here shortly. But that, that is another one of the areas where we'll be working. And again, on the on the right photo there, that is the uh, the interchange at um, the the I forty one Zoo Freeway. We do go under that bridge, um, just for your information. <clears throat> uh, during the the conception of this work, the Waukesha Water Utility went through a rigorous pre-qualification process and competitive bidding. As part of that competitive bidding, Super Excavators Inc. was determined to be the lowest responsible bidder. Super Excavators is a um, Wisconsin local contractor out of the Maumee Falls area. Super X is, is well qualified to to do this work, they, they perform all underground work, including sewers and water, water mains, forest mains, pipelines. They do, do some horizontal directional drilling and earthwork. They also do some of their own uh, jack and bore and tunneling, dewatering, clearing and grubbing, trucking and traffic control. <clears throat> Like I mentioned, uh, there will be some, some trenchless technology work that is happening. Trenchless technologies is used in sensitive areas. Uh, if, there, if we need to avoid either an intersection or a sensitive utility or wetlands or any other um, area that, that we don't want to uh, excavate around. So we use a trenchless technologies. There's two methods of trenchless technologies that are being used. Uh, jack and bore and horizontal directional drilling. The horizontal directional drilling, that is the trenchless technology that will be primarily used at the Oklahoma National Split uh, in that green space that I mentioned earlier. That involves um, drilling from the surface, uh, a 36 inch uh, HDPE pipe through the surface from one side to the other and then pulling it back to to uh, eliminate uh, excavation in that area so that is a that is an interesting process um, as you're driving by you'll you may see right now there is a process going on similar to that on national and coffee area so that is the same type of installation that will be going on in that oklahoma national intersection the other trenchless technology work that we'll be doing is called jack and boring. Jack and boring involves um, excavating two pits on either side of the area that you're trying to work around and placing a uh, pipe between those two pits and then placing your carrier pipe, which is your water supply pipeline in that, in that pipe. Um, just be aware that uh, it, Sometimes it may not look like there's a lot of activity going on in some of these trenchless activities, but please be assured that we're working to our best to make sure that we're moving through the project in a quick and efficient manner to make sure that, that every, everybody is, uh, is least inconvenienced as possible. 
As Katie mentioned, uh, we are using door hangers to provide notifications to the surrounding areas as, as uh, the project approaches and work begins. Um, door hangers, they're only left in on legal visible areas, including they're mainly the front doors of your residence. We are not allowed to hang door hangers on side doors, back doors, uh, mailboxes, fences, so forth. So if you are have a door that you don't normally use, your front door, uh, please try to, once we get into the area, make a, make an effort to, to check that front door for these types of notifications. Notifications uh, will be given given out 14 days prior to work starting in an area. That notification just gives you some general information about the work that's coming, um, when, when to expect it, any um, additional information and contact information, uh, whether you have uh, questions or concerns. As work progresses and we get closer to your specific address, though we'll provide a, a three-day notice. That three-day notice is uh, a little closer to, to an advanced disruption, uh, i.e. a driveway interruption or a, a service interruption, water or sewer, or any other type of impact that, you, that we may deem necessary to let you know and be prepared for. And then just one day before that that service interruption occurs, we'll give you another notice with some specific information and some specific uh, details, timing, and other instructions. So those, those notices become very important for you as the resident to help keep you informed. And with that, I can turn this back over to Dan and Katie if there's any additional questions or comments. All right, well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Katie. Um, Katie, are, do you wanna answer some of the questions that came in ahead of time or did we answer all of the questions? It seems like we have a little bit of time so I can answer, answer them more specifically. Uh, there was a question about a condo complex at 114th in Oklahoma. And it, there was a concern that that can uh, that the landscape projects were going to be disrupted. Uh, just want to let you know the property is not going to be disturbed during construction. The pipeline is going to be running under the westbound lane and the median in Oklahoma Avenue. So we won't be going into the right of way near your property and there will be con uh, there'll be traffic management so that you'll be able to maintain access through that whole construction time. And then there was also a question about um, whether or not the the traffic, how traffic was going to be impacted and how construction was going to be impacted in between Wilmer Road and National Avenue on Oklahoma. And there was a concern that the Oklahoma Park townhomes were not going to be able to have access. And we want to let you know that you will definitely have access maintained. Traffic is going to be phased in three different phases. Um, where there's going to be construction moving just west of the townhomes and access to the, to the entrance will be through Wilmer Road. Then there's going to be construction from the townhomes and we'll do access through the westbound um, with a turn lane just east of South Wilmer Road and then through 108th Street. And then we'll move construction to the east of the townhomes and access will be westbound again then through South Wilmer Road. So we will maintain access to those townhomes throughout that construction. There's also another question. There is, um, everyone's welcome to all these different open houses. We do try and uh, focus them on different communities. There's going to be another open house in June, um, working on that date, I believe it's the 16th for Milwaukee residents. And the, that'll be more of um, the focus on the construction in the, the Milwaukee section of Oklahoma Avenue. Correct, There, and I just wanna to add to that. So we will have an open house on June 16th or about about June 16th, um, we will we'll do it on the pipeline construction. And then Milwaukee is also planning an open house 
that will be held. So that that one will be um, online and virtual like this one is. And the Milwaukee is also planning to do an open house on the pump station that they are constructing as part of this. And that one they plan on doing in person. They may even do it at the site um, where the booster station will be located. So um, just wanted to make you aware of that. So I don't know that we have any more questions. I'm, I'm looking through. I believe every question has been answered again. We would like to thank you for taking the time to attend this uh, virtual open house. If you do have questions or if your neighbors have questions or if, you know, oh, there's another question that popped up. Let's see if we can answer that. Can you please specify which side of the street construction will be on between 103rd and 106th in Oklahoma? Let me see if I can. Jeffrey Katie. I believe it's still in that median area. Let me just see if I can pull that up. Actually, um, we can, I can um, email this answer so I can be specific. And, and again, if you have any other questions like that too, you can all, I think then you're gonna say, you can always call our hotline or send us an email and we can follow up. So that, let me see if I can get to that drawing while you're wrapping sure. up. Sure, while well, I'm finishing up, you can see if you can find that. Um, okay. So again, we'd like to thank you for attending. Um, this virtual open house again if your neighbors have any questions or information they are more than welcome to uh, contact us um, if you have questions that come you know that you have after you were out of this meeting you can certainly call us on our hotline 262-409-4444 um, you can send us an email at info at greatwateralliance.com we, we monitor those constantly and we're, we try to return those as soon as possible you can visit our website at greatwateralliance.com. There is a lot of useful information on the website. There's an in your area section that will try and have updates as to when construction is going to be in specific areas in your reason in your in your region or in your area. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you do, you can sign up for our newsletter. We do send out construction updates through our newsletter. Um, we do let the residents know what's give the residents and every other week, give them an update as to where where construction is going to be happening. So there's, we're trying our best to get information out to people. Um, it's very difficult to get it out to everyone that we want to. So we're trying our best to get it out to, to everyone that we can and everyone that's affected by our construction. And we really do appreciate the residents of West Dallas and Greenfield um, for assisting us in this very important project that it's a it's a, that's addressing a public health and safety issue for the city of Waukesha and we do appreciate that. Um, Katie, did you were you able to find that answer? I was. So we are um, it's, we are on both sides of the road. So at 106, the pipeline is on the north side of the road towards the median. And then at approximately, boy, about 400 feet past 105th, close to 104th, we change um, and switch over to the other side and switch to the south side of the street and then continue on the south street, south side of Oklahoma to 103rd, or uh, yeah, 103rd. So through that area, we're on both sides of the street. Yeah. And we cross over, but are we towards the median, Katie? We are, yeah. Okay, I'm both, so on both sides of the street, we're towards the median. Yeah. So again, um, we'd like to thank you um, for your attendance tonight and we appreciate you coming out and spending your time with us we know your time is valuable and we appreciate you spending it with us and again if you have any questions please feel free to contact us with that um, I think we're going to close the meeting so thank you everyone have a good evening